You may have never heard of the photographer Carlton Watkins, but in his day, he was greatly respected, admired, and imitated. He had exceptional talent with a camera, but not much of a knack for business, and he struggled most of his life to make ends meet. When Carlton Watkins ventured into Yosemite Valley in 1861, few people in the world had any idea what lay there. There were no roads, and the travel was arduous. To capture the vast scale of Yosemite's landscapes, Watkins had had a camera custom-built with a wide-angle lens. The enormous glass negatives, measuring 18 by 22 inches and known as mammoth plates, had to be sensitized with chemicals on the spot and exposed while still wet. Hauling his camera, chemicals, and glass plates weighing nearly a ton, he traveled with a team of mules to the remote reaches of the valley. Back east, Watkins' pictures provided a first glimpse of Yosemite's dramatic waterfalls and giant sequoias. In Washington, D.C., in the midst of the Civil War, his photos influenced a bill that would protect Yosemite for all time, anticipating the creation of the earliest national parks. In San Francisco, on Montgomery Street, he opened his own gallery where he sold his photographs of Yosemite and other popular local subjects. Watkins possessed unmatched technical skill and a natural talent for capturing the magnificent scale of the Western landscape. His reputation grew, and soon his name became inseparable from his spectacular views of Yosemite. The railroad baron, Collis P. Huntington, had been Watkins' childhood friend, and in exchange for his survey photographs, Huntington granted him unlimited travel. At the height of his success, Watkins would travel by two rail cars, one for his photographic wagon and horses, another for his living quarters. He took out a considerable loan and opened a lavish gallery on Montgomery Street near the Palace Hotel. But during an economic crisis in 1875, he was pressed to repay the debt and could not. His creditor seized not only the gallery, but all of his negatives and sold them to Watkins competitor, Isaiah Tabor, who printed and sold them with his own trademark. This might have destroyed Watkins but he set out to rebuild his stock by re-photographing his popular subjects. He opened a new gallery, but his business never truly recovered. In his late 60s, desperately poor and in failing health, he was forced to move into a railroad car in Oakland, where he lived with his family for more than a year. In April of 1906, back in San Francisco, a representative from Stanford University arranged to purchase Watkins negatives for the university's archives. But mere days later, the negatives ready for shipment, San Francisco was shaken into ruin. With the fires that swept the city for days, Watkins Gallery and all his glass negatives were destroyed. At the end of his life, Watkins was effectively forgotten. He died destitute and was buried in an unmarked grave. But in his 40-year career, he had printed more than 1,400 mammoth plate photos and 5,000 stereographs. Gradually, his pictures would be rediscovered and heralded for their unmatched technical skill and clarity of vision. Today, he is widely regarded as the greatest photographer of the American West. <laughs>